Two and three in Summit League play. They have been playing a bear of a schedule on the road primarily over the last few weeks as Caleb Stewart, this team's leading scorer. Second chance opportunity is going to be big in this one, especially on the defensive side for Denver as Tommy heads to the rack and scores it on a nice little. Yeah. The battle of the glass, being able to get to second chance points and limit second chance opportunities. That's a great shot there by Caleb Stewart coming out of the gate hot. St. Thomas with an illness, a 74-73 overtime win for South Dakota at home, which was the first as Isaiah Addo Anchor will try to answer, and he does so. And Denver right back even 5-5. It probably feels as though it should be 4-1, had that overtime loss to Oral Roberts here at home. As Tynemo will uncork to three, and he buries it from the top of the key. And DU's lead grows to four for the first time tonight. June left side. Up top is able to find Hill and deals it off to Caleb Stewart and had a great dip down low to two. The car and then that three rimming in and out will give Denver an opportunity to build on this two point lead. 10 to eight lob down low. There's Carr on that pick and roll look that Denver has really grown prone. This is New Mexico, the transfer from Grand Canyon University who has been a block machine for DU this year. That three from straight up top and Max Burchill, the walk on who has forced his way into this lineup at 12-11. You gotta know where Birch Hill is at all times, well over 40%. He can get hot at moments, his car right back to him. I mean, just keep feeding him. It's really a very integral part of this roster. The Sioux Falls product, who swings it into the corner and hooks up there with Kramer. Stephen Kramer's floater is good from the paint. In Florida to play basketball. The very first place he came in the United States was DIA. He landed at DIA, said it took him two hours. You know, to 11 wins last year, 15 wins this year. I mean, well on their way. Beat the preseason favorite in the Summit League just a few games ago. You've got the nation's leading scores. So you know how this is built up. This is one of the best crowds I've seen here. 15 wins last year, the most of this program since 2017 2018. If the Pioneers win tonight, right turnaround jumper there from the block. Well, it's fun to see the community start to kind of take note of that. I think it's warranted. I've watched this team so much so far this season. There's a guy right there. I'm telling you, I could watch him for 40 minutes. I, I love. I have always loved about this DU community is that you've got universities that obviously have fans from all over the place and across the country and big alumni bases and all that. Four turnovers, took out three turnovers on the South Dakota side. Now a wide open three ball look, and Javon Hill catches in. South Dakota now. A game, they've had some games where half of their shots have come from the three point line. So, you know, that, that's a scouting report area. That's a great take there by Lopez San Vicente. He's down low to La Hot Tune, going to work against that track down low, and now swung to the near side wing from a broadcast position, and another three good for Javon Hill. And, South Dakota to start this game. Well, South Dakota's doing a great job of playing from the inside out. Getting a post touch. You got a guy like June who can handle that pressure. Good response there from Tommy Bruner. Boston Holt trailing the play. Now he gets back into it as TB will charge into the paint. Plants the foot. Turnaround floater is good. Tommy Bruner has seven. But five of eight on the other side for South Dakota. Denver with a two point lead. June gets by Tommy Hall and lays it in. Caught him off guard, caught time off guard, and was able to attack off the dribble. Showing his versatility a little bit. Now Toko to answer, got it! <laughs> <laughs> rebounding numbers, this feels like a toughness game, in my opinion. The team that's gonna win those categories have the advantage. Bruner down low, off the window, is good. Unbelievable. The nation's leading scorer, only had 15 in that win at North Dakota State, followed it up with 32 last time out, but another open three look, and another one that's good. Penetration looks as Tommy going to help on the far side against Chun, and now up top, Stewart open and good. Unbelievable. Seven for 10 now. They felt like coming into this game that Coach Eric Peterson, you know, our offense could get going a little bit here against Denver. And it's a response from the Pioneers. That is true. Head coach Jeff Wilburn would, would say the same sentiment, that they're very much needing to improve in a lot of the defensive areas they have throughout the course of the season, but right now struggling to slow down. Able to stay elevated long enough to get it off to Dynamo. Now Toko trapped down low. He'll turn and go to work against June. Fade away is good. Such great touch. Toko Dynamo. Oh, throwing it down low for June, and too, too easy there. Way too easy. Gut punch of a loss to in-state rival South Dakota State on Saturday, but Eric Peterson felt largely like that game is a nice putback there. Toko Tynemo in the right spot. 
And for Denver, you kind of catch a break there with those effectively second chance points not falling as Bruner left side layup is good. Tommy spilling to the baseline and now being better defensively. Austin Holt finds an open look from Caleb Stewart and another three falls for South Dakota, which will finish the first half eight for 13 from three point range. You gotta continue to trust your scouting report, trust the percentages. South Dakota shoots 35%. Good, strong, aggressive drive there by Boston Holt. 58 from 365, so it's crucial for this Denver team to get to the line because the Pioneers have been getting about 20 points per game at the free throw line. That's a nice touch there from the hot tune who's got knives. Built some very big early season momentum, but you get two crucial home games. Nice take there by Tommy Bruner. It's a good touch off the window. Oh, by a South Dakota team that is hungry. I mean, this team looks hungry, and I love their energy and effort. Tommy Brunner, a great job to get to Von Hill on skates and then Isaiah. His first three from the floor here in the second half after shooting 50% in the first half of this game. The turnaround jumper there is good from Javon Hill, who's got 13. Check that, that bucket actually coming from Holt as Denver looking to respond. Down low, time low, nice hook shot up off the glass of good. Able to get stops. It was a night for offense at Hamilton Gymnasium. A turnaround hook shot good <laughs> from two. I mean, that, that to throw seven feet. You gotta bring it down <laughs> for normal sized people. Into the corner, three ball on the way. That one is good. And there is the 2021 22 Summit League Freshman of the Year in the All Summer. Here's Brunt. Stewart again looking to the wing. And now into the paint for Virgil. Wide open Stewart's three is good once more. Bruner once more, five on the shot clock. TV head fakes a man into the air. Tommy takes it into the paint. No good. The put back on the fall. And the rebound for South Dakota. It's stripped away by Bruner. Tommy to the right. Oh, this is the biggest talking point, but look at him in there with three, four guys just being aggressive. Try, just, just, just staying with it. Toward the middle stretches of this second half. Pioneers playing in front of their biggest crowd of the year by far. Bruner into the lane. Tommy and finishing over the much bigger Mayu Boomers. A little bit of frustration there. South Dakota at times. See if Denver can do a good job of just, you know, kind of capitalizing as Grinchley. I mean, how, how good is Jackson Grinchley? Such a vital piece to this team. And make no mistake, that was a really difficult shot to hit with where he was positioned as the floater is good there from Paul Brunt, former Summit League freshman of the year. During his inaugural campaign at North Dakota, hitting and finishing, there is Stephen Kramer in the lane for two. Put that on the highlight reel. I, I, I've got to see that one again. 68-65, and is that something that can get Denver going? Well, won't be on this defensive possession. Another make. 70 to 65, I mean, for all the struggles that we talked about. TP great back by the nice feed from DeAndre Craig for Denver's 10th assist of the night. Since their 41-40 lead at halftime. Here's Caleb Stewart, hard charge up the left side and a beautiful take for two. He's got 18 from beyond the arc here in the second half. Definitely. That has played a big role. Definitely much cooler. Woo. And Stewart off the glass again for two more. This is one of those games where you really feel like you have to be able to take care of business at home as Tommy drives and now kicks. Open three look for Toko. Yes! But you've got to ramp it up here defensively. You've got to see if you can come up with some turnovers. Stewart into the lane. Another layup, no good. But this time, La Chun is there to clean it up. 45.5% on average this season is at 56% for this game. Tommy Rice is in five. When you need an answer, the nation's leading scorer is there to respond. And Denver has made it a one possession game again. Sam Vicente there for his fourth rebound of the night. DeAndre Craig has to be in the game right now for Denver. He's been the best on ball defender in terms of being disruptive. It's I watch this guy play. How awkward. Five seconds at Hamilton. Right side, here's Boston Holt. Baseline off the glass for Tina. Quick two points. Five to go. In to work on Caleb Stewart. Bruner, step back, Jay, for the win. That's short, and we're headed overtime. 
both fouled out of this game. Mayum Boom now at four fouls down the left side of the paint. That's no good for Javon Hill. Back up top, the three ball has been there all night for Caleb Stewart. That's his fifth make from downtown. Warner in transition. Tommy goes baseline, jump stops there, finds Otto Ankle for three in the top. <laughs> Three on the way from Stewart. Got it again. Six, a, a six point margin on the board for the Oats, and he does so. 82 86. Tommy steps into a three and passes it in with 36 point one to go. I mean, this was exactly the shot that Denver needed. No, nope. hardly. 34 points as his team is back in front by five. Rimmer for three again. And it's it is a two-point game. Does Denver have a stop? It comes down to the defensive end of the floor in the complete 45 minutes of this game. Four-point game. Tommy in the air for three. Got it! And the foul goal! And Tommy Rooney is heading to the side to try to tie it up! Tommy Bruner flung his leg out to draw the foul call. But Bruner is heading to the foul for a four-point play. And just like that, in the blink of an eye, we are in double, we're in double overtime. Caleb Stewart has been the answer to Tommy Bruner all night long, and he knocks down his first shot of the second overtime period. Pioneers fans pleading with this team to get some stops. Stewart for three in the tie, and he got it. <laughs> just... 39 points for Caleb Stewart, a career high. Tommy lobs it down low. Oh, yeah! Yeah! In front again. South Dakota's tired defensively. This has been one of the most unbelievable basketball games I have seen in my professional career. Tommy's got another one, he's got 49. Some unbelievable performances. Back out to the wing, Holt finds Stewart again. Going to work against DeAndre Craig, he's gotta be careful, he's got four fouls. Stewart, step back three. Eight, 42. made threes. Here's Caleb Stewart, who is just unconscious right now. Caleb Stewart, 49 points for Tommy Bruner. Final minute, Tommy down low. Open three, Tyson gone. Yeah! Again! Snaps up on the Andre Craig. Going to work, down the left side. Spinning, good contest by Carr, but it's Unbelievable, unbelievable. It's just only <laughs> South Dakota takes it out right now. Denver's just got to hope to come up with a steal. Tommy Bruner, eight. Tommy does it. Tommy gets it to Tyson Garf, looking across the floor, save for the win! <laughs> On this last possession, the kick out, one of the biggest shots in this young man's career. Tommy to send it in, looking for DeAndre Craig, throws it into the backcourt, ball game, Denver wins!